In 2021, there's been a handful of cars that have come out of nowhere and shut down the internet. Taycan Cross Turismo, 911 GT3, Ford Bronco. But top of that list for me was the car some people called the Tesla killer, the Hyundai Ioniq 5. I mean, just look at it. It looks like a DeLorean for your mum. If they make another Back to the Future movie, Marty McFly has to drive this car. Kids, look it up. Great movie. In terms of appearance, it looks like a hatchback, but it's actually a crossover inspired by the Hyundai Pony, the company's first car to be mass-produced and exported. And it has some incredibly funky retro details, like the 8-bit arcade game-inspired front and rear lights made up of giant pixels, the clamshell bonnet that gives it a determined look, and active air vents on the front bumper. In profile, it has an enormous wheelbase of over 3 meters, longer than a Range Rover Sport, which gives it plenty of space inside. More on that in a second. There are huge, very interesting 20-inch wheels, bodywork slashes that make it look like it was vandalized by Zorro, kids look it up, and even a solar roof which sadly isn't available here in the UK for obvious reasons. Great design though. I don't know if it's just me, but I find this thing incredible to look at. I am all over this car. The interior is quite controversial as well. It's got a retro chic thing going on. It looks a bit like what you'd get if you asked someone from the 1960s to design a car for 2021, but I quite like it. And there's lots going on in here. I really like this Mercedes-Benz inspired display system, which has two 12-inch displays, one for the driver and one for your infotainment, and it's actually really responsive and really quick as well. You've also got a lot of physical buttons along the dashboard for your map, navigation, and media playback, and even though the heating, ventilation, and climate controls are virtual buttons, they work quite well, and you have a physical volume knob as well. Check this out. In this car, you don't have a glove box. Instead, you get a glove drawer. You pull it out and it's, well, it's a drawer, which is <laughs> I think is a really, really good innovation. In terms of the platform, earlier I said it's got a really long wheelbase. It's also got a really flat floor, and that's allowed Hyundai to make some interesting decisions with the center console. Look at this. It slides back and forward to give you either more space in the back or more space in the front to play footsie with your passenger. Speaking of footsie, these front seats also recline. If I press a button on the seat, they'll actually recline. You've got a leg rest which folds up and then the seat actually folds back. A bit like you get in uh, a first class flight, for example. And if that's not far enough, you can make it go back even further. Look at this. That is quite mad. I've spent more time napping at motorway service stations than most people have had hot dinners. And let me tell you, there's not another car in the known universe that reclines as much as this. I don't know why that would be useful. Maybe it comes in handy if you're stuck at a charging station, for example, and you need to spend a few hours, you know, while your car charges up in privacy with your passenger. But I think, I think it's a really cool innovation. Good on you, Hyundai. It's practical as well, with five USB ports, loads of space for bits and bobs, a 540 litre boot with seats that fold down, making it a useful space for large objects or big shopping halls, and there's even a front trunk, which gives you an extra 24 litres in all-wheel drive versions like this one, or 57 litres in rear-wheel drive models. So, it looks a bit weird, but is it weird to drive? Simple answer is no, it's completely normal. It's actually a pleasure to drive this thing. It's really, really simple. It's got this little stalk on the right-hand side that you twist forward to go forward or twist back to go back. And that's about it. In terms of the ergonomics of the car, well, the seating position is lovely. Also, the adjustability in the seats is good as well. Watch this, I'll move the seat up as high as it will go. Hopefully my head doesn't get chopped off, but it's still going, it's still going, it's still going, it's still going and my knees are now on the dashboard. And basically, I feel like I'm perched right on top of the car. There's a massive amount of adjustability in the seat. So if you're vertically challenged, shall we say, then you'll get a great view out of the Ionic 5. You really will. As for the steering, well, it's nice and light, nice and responsive. It's accurate. The car goes exactly where I want it to go without any real surprises. It makes it feel really maneuverable. And there are a couple of things that help with it, actually. One of them is this wicked blind spot indicator system. So if I indicate, I get a little video feed on my driver display showing my blind spot on my left-hand side and on my right-hand side. So 
it makes it feel so safe. It gives you quite a lot of confidence. You don't have to look around to try and figure out whether there's, there's anyone kind of tucked in in a place where you can't see. That's really clever. I've never seen that before on another car. There's also a head-up display that includes your speed limit, your current speed, your navigation information, all projected on the windscreen. Huge arrows tell you where you should be going. And it's also linked to the lane departure warning system. So arrows float up like in an augmented reality style that let you know that you're drifting out of your lane. It's really clever and really well executed. There's one thing I want to try out with the steering though, because it's got such a long wheelbase, I suspect the turning circle is not amazing. I've driven on this road quite a few times, so I know that I can normally do it in a five. I would be surprised. Oh, it's got an auto brake feature as well. If it thinks you're gonna crash, it stops the car. But I'd be surprised if I do that in a five. That's five there. I need two more. Yep. So turning circle, not amazing. It's okay, not a complete disaster, but this is the kind of car that would benefit from having rear wall steering. But we can forgive that. One of the coolest systems on the Ionic 5 is something called V2L or vehicle to load. And it allows you to power external electric devices using the car's battery. The original idea behind it was that you could tow a caravan up to 1600 kilos, by the way, to a caravan park, plug it in and have all your devices run off the car. But it's still cool even if you don't have a caravan. All you gotta do is plug in this adapter, Bosch, plug in your external device, Bosch, push this button down here, Bosch, and then go nuts. I love gardening. I love it. Come on. It's not even my head. You're welcome. And it's not just useful for budding gardeners. There's a second three pin plug in the back seat too. And because V2L allows for 3.6 kilowatt charging, it will power nearly anything. So if you have a friend that's running low on juice, you can connect your V2L adapter, connect that external gadget and off you go. And yes, this electric car can even charge other electric cars. Let's talk about these pedals. I really like them. They've got these plus and minus icons on them. Really nice. And also there's a footrest down here on the left hand side and it's massive. Maybe that's a consequence of having more floor space to play with. Normally in most cars, the footrest is tiny and a bit awkward, but in this it's enormous. And that combined with the amount of space you get on the right hand side just makes it feel like you're sitting in a lounge. It makes the driving feel exceptionally comfortable. As for the brakes, well, there's a lot going on there. There's normal and sport braking modes for some reason and different levels of brake regeneration, which you control using the paddles behind the steering wheel. So you pull the right paddle and that will decrease the amount of regen you get and the car will float along as if there's no braking going on. And on the left-hand side, the more you pull the left paddle, the more regen you get. You've got four different levels and a fifth level called iPedal, which turns it into a one pedal car. So you accelerate with the accelerator and when you lift off, it breaks the car all the way down to a complete standstill. That's the theory, will it stop? Yep, so you don't actually need the brake pedal at all. There's more as well because it has an auto setting. If you pull the right pedal and hold it, it'll go into auto mode and then use the cameras to sense the road ahead. If it detects a car in front of you, it will automatically increase the amount of regen you get. And if that car pulls out of the way or accelerates away, it will reduce the amount of regen you get. So you don't have to think about it. It's nice that you've got all these options with the braking system. A lot of electric cars give you one or the other, but this gives you everything. In terms of raw performance, it's really good as well. This is the top model, the all wheel drive version, and Hyundai say it will do 0 to 62 in 5.2 seconds, which I think we should probably try and verify actually. So let me pull to a stop. There's no fancy launch control in this. You literally stop, mash the pedal, release. Oh, oh she's quick. That is quick. <sighs> <laughs> that is that is quicker than I expected. You can actually have fun in this car. It's surprising how rapid it is. And then when you get to a corner, what happens? You chuck it in, body control is really good. It stays nice and flat. All the weight is low down in the chassis. So the center of gravity is really low. 
no surprises whatsoever. It handles beautifully. I like it. So the Ionic 5 handles itself really well when you take it by the scruff of the neck, but it can also drive itself. It's got a really cool self-driving feature, a bit like on a Tesla, and it also has a summon feature, a bit like a Tesla, except in this case, it's called remote parking. To use it, I press the lock button on the remote and press the bottom button on the remote, hold that for a couple of seconds. The car will then wake up and press the forward button. And that is, should in theory, yep, it's off, look at that it's gonna park itself in a narrow gap between these two cars. I have to follow along with it slightly so that it knows I'm not too far away, but it's doing it pretty much by itself. I mean, it's doing a bit of steering there to make sure that it gets in there without crashing. It's also really, really convenient for people who end up in a parking space where it's just a bit too narrow to do themselves. It's also great if you're just really lazy as well. There, she's in. Plus, if you wanna get it out again, you press the reverse button and the car should take care of absolutely everything for you. There it goes, in reverse. It's a robot car. Genuinely, that's impressive. Like I said, I've seen this feature in Teslas before, but you've got to control it through the app and it's all a bit of a faff. You even have to walk along with the car really, really closely, especially in the UK. I know US rules are different, but here, no bother. The range in the Ionic 5 is pretty good as well. There are two battery options, a 58 kilowatt hour battery and a 72 kilowatt hour battery. And the range in the smaller battery is around 238 miles. The range in this 72 kilowatt hour battery pack is around 300 miles. Now, normally you have to take those figures with a pinch of salt, but Hyundai's cars are massively efficient. I did a journey yesterday, my school run. I averaged around 30 miles an hour. And by the end of it, I was getting five miles per kilowatt hour. If you multiply that by 72, it works out to be 360 miles. Now, obviously that's at the top end of what you can expect from this car. And it's affected by things such as weather and speed, etc. But I tested it again. I did another journey and got four miles per kilowatt hour. So, I mean, it's going to do pretty much what Hyundai say. You can expect 300 miles from this thing all day long. If you're wondering what the solar roof does, not a massive amount, but it does help. If I go into the solar roof setting here, it will show me the state of charge from the solar roof and also exactly how much juice it's managed to harvest over the lifetime of the car. Now, this car's done about 1,300 miles and during its life on the road, that roof has managed to generate just short of 24 kilowatt hours. So sort of roughly half of a tank of battery over its lifetime. If that's the figure, you're gonna get every sort of 1,300 miles. I think that's pretty decent. Although, of course, it does depend a lot on where you live. If you live in the UK, maybe it's not so much use. Hyundai have a pretty strong history when it comes to electric cars. We've seen the Kona, which was lovely. We've seen the Ionic, which was great. But it seems like they've taken the learnings from its previous endeavors in the electric space and just stepped it up a gear with the Ionic 5. It's just a brilliant all-rounder. It's really relaxing and simple to drive. It's comfortable, it's quiet, it's got terrific performance, and the packaging is absolutely spot on. This, I'm gonna say it, this is a better packaged car than you will get in any internal combustion engine vehicle of a similar size. They just use the space so well. They've also thought long and hard about how to apply clever little touches all over the place. You know, the V2L charging, the blind spot monitor, that make this car just an absolute joy to drive every single day. I think it's brilliant. Obviously, some people aren't gonna appreciate the exterior design, but I love that. And I love to see companies like Hyundai experimenting with new designs and being brave with their decisions. The Ionic 5 is just a brilliant piece of kit. I can't, I can't recommend it enough. Go buy one before I do. <laughs>